After looking at the ideal gas equation, let's move on and look at what happens when gases do not behave perfectly ideally. So we have our ideal gas law, PV bar equals RT, reminding ourselves that V bar, the molar volume, is the volume divided by the number of moles, which is equivalent to saying PV equals NRT. And this is true for all gases as the pressure approaches zero, or equivalently as the molecules do not interact with each other, and as the pressure goes to zero, they will not see other molecules, so they will not interact by definition. So we can define a factor here. If we divide P V bar by R T, then we should get one on the right hand side here. So we're going to define the quantity Z as P V bar over R T. And we're going to call this for a gas its compressibility factor. So for a given ideal gas, this should just be one because PV bar, PV bar equals RT for an ideal gas. So that's just something divided by the same thing. So that equals one. So Z equals one for an ideal gas. Okay, so when will Z not equal one? Well, there's two kinds of situations that we're primarily going to be interested in. One of them is kind of at medium range, these gas molecules will be slightly attracted to each other. So if they have some type of attraction to each other, some potential energy that they go down in as they approach each other, then they might tend to cluster with one another, form clusters and form things like dimers or trimers. And if that happened, the number of effective particles would go down. So the effective volume of the system then would be greater than the true volume because the number of particles is effectively decreasing. So the effective volume is increasing if we're assuming some type of ideal gas situation. And then the other case is at very short range, we know that these molecules should repel each other. So these molecules do actually take up some amount of physical space, after which they will start repelling each other if you try to jam them in closer than that. So in this case, they take up some physical volume, so our effective volume that's left over is less than the volume which we would actually measure for our system if we were just to calculate the amount of physical space which our system can access. So uh, the first kind of approximation beyond the ideal gas law which takes both of these factors into account is the van der Waals equation of state. And the van der Waals equation of state can be stated as a correction to the ideal gas law. You have P plus a parameter A over V bar squared, this whole term, times V bar minus a second parameter B equals RT. So we see that same kind of structure. It's Now it's P plus something times V bar minus something equals RT. So just a slight modification there. So what are these two parameters here? Well, we have A, and that's a parameter which accounts for the attraction strength between molecules, how strongly are they attracted to each other at kind of medium range distances. You can remember that's A for attraction. And then you have the parameter B, which is effectively the molecular size or the molecular volume. How much space does an individual gas molecule take up? And as you get to larger and larger molecular weights, you can imagine this B parameter will probably get larger and larger. And these are not exact. These are generally things which are determined empirically. That is, they're determined by measurement. And then for a given gas, there will be a certain value of A and a certain value of B based off of pressure, volume, temperature measurements at a whole bunch of uh, different sets of these uh, states. Because after all, that is the goal of an equation of state is to predict what some unknown uh, physical property is given that you can measure uh, the remaining physical properties for a particular gas. Okay, so... 
if we want to know how this affects our behavior and how things deviate from ideal behavior, um, if we can rearrange this van der Waals equation of state, we can put it into a form like this. If we solve for pressure, we'll find that P equals RT over V bar minus B minus A over V bar squared. So we see that if we have some molecular size, that's going to be a positive value. The bigger it gets, then we're subtracting away from the molar volume. So the bigger the molecular size gets, the less effective volume we have, and the larger this term gets. So the pressure goes up as our molecular size goes up. And then our attraction strength, as it gets stronger and stronger, this term gets larger and it's negative. So this decreases the pressure as the molecules are more attracted to each other. So this uh, A indeed is an attraction. It shows how strongly the molecules tend to cluster and then thus decrease the total pressure which you will measure. So if we plot these things, if we for example, we're going to be plotting this compressibility factor Z versus pressure. Now let's say right here with this dotted line we have Z equals 1 which would be our ideal gas behavior. Now we know that at very low pressure all gases will tend to be ideal so at low, very low pressure they should all have a Z which is approaching 1. So you might have something where it starts there and then goes up. You might have a situation where it starts there, goes down, and then comes back up. You might have a situation where it starts there, goes up quickly, and then doesn't go up as fast. There's all sorts of possibilities here. And what it, the behavior of an individual gas model, uh, molecule is just something that has to be measured experimentally and then these two parameters are kind of fit to curves like this to see what type of behavior uh, they actually display when they are uh, taking into account their non-ideal behavior, this volume they take up and how they're attracted to each other. Now there are more advanced equations of state than this, um, things called the redlich kwong and Peng-Robinson and other models which are more advanced, but this is really a good introduction into uh, the types of factors which go beyond the ideal gas law and the kind of things you need to be concerned about when going past that very, very simple model um, which you have here, which assumes that these attractions and these molecular volumes are zero.